there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, five uh, spicy whites. Oh, well, I don't know whether they're going to be spicy. Uh, I'd better just dig into them and find out. Uh, I have got how many different countries? I've got quite a few different countries. Looks like three different countries. We're starting off in New Zealand uh, with Vidal or Vidal. I'm never quite sure of Vidal. Um, Pinot Gris, 2012, East Coast. Quite weighty, musky pear character. Um, more, yes, definitely more Pinot Gris style, a uh, bit of fullness and body rather than the uh, light and slightly anodyne Pinot Grigio. Feels like it's going to have, um, uh, maybe I miss, I'm, I'm going to miss a little bit of freshness and maybe there's not quite enough uh, spice and uh, richness of peachy fruit to uh, to sustain it in the way that good Alsace examples uh, uh, manage. But, or am I wrong? Let's have a see. And that's fair enough wine. Um, there is some juiciness in there. Maybe, as I, I was expecting, I'd like a little bit more Christmas and zest. But um, I don't mind that weighty, weighty, musky pear, peach, and that, that little touch of spice. Um, good rather than great. Let's see whether next one's good rather than great. Actually, it's an old favourite. Vigna Esmeralda from Torres. This is the 2012 vintage of this blend of, uh, I think it's Gewürztraminer and Muscat. I'm not sure whether it's a 50-50 blend. I will see if I can find out. And just what you expect. It, it's got that uh, lively, uh, grapey character of Muscat and the, the Muscat freshness uh, that, that sometimes verges on the citrus uh, with the more exotic lychee, uh, rose petal style of, of, of Gewürztraminer. What, but, but what's good about the way the, the, the Gewürztraminer here is it's not gone over the top and oily. It's not like they've given it lots of time with the skins and the juice together to extract a little bit more perfume and, and, and in the process extracted bitterness. This smells like it's going to be fresh, zesty and oh the bottle is finished. Yeah a touch of lime juice, juicy crisp grapey, very tasty, um, straight down the line summer wine, um, a banker, if, you're, if you ever come across a wine list in Spain you don't know uh, uh, many of the wines, if there's this on for the red for the white wine or Vigny Sols and another of their white wines and Sangre de Toro in the reds then choose those you're not going to go far too far wrong. Let's stick in Spain for wine number three, which is Venus del Vero and Solantano Gewürztraminer 2012. Now this is on the oilier, heavier side of, um, uh, of Gewürz and it feels like they have given it a little, little bit of skin contact to get some of the, the, those uh, muskier characters out of, uh, out of the grapes. So yes, it's a heavier, uh, more weighty, um, you know that ooze that you get out of baklava, uh, that... Uh, that mixture of rose petal and, and, and sweetness. That's what it, it feels like you've got here. Don't think it's going to be a sweet wine. Maybe there might be a few grams of sugar, but uh, it, I think it's just going to be more the uh, the weight and richness of the fruit that carries it through. Will it be a little bit on the bitter side? Let's have a see. Oh, I think they've done a pretty good job there. Um, I like its juiciness, its liveliness. Um, it is certainly more weighty and fleshier than the, uh, the, the, than the Esmeralda. But it's not descending into caricature. Uh, there is a richness and juiciness about it. Uh, but then just when you think it's going to go a little bit too blobby, citrus freshness um, tapers, uh, uh, yeah, it rains it all in and um, yeah, keeps it fresh and keeps it coming back for more. So I will do. Wine number four. We are in France here for Alain Grignon's Viognier Selection Particulière Pédoc 2012. Well, I like bits of this. I like the it, it, it's classic Viognier perfumes, uh, the, the bits of uh, peach kernel, bit of the apricot, maybe a little bit of the uh, creamy nuttiness. But there's also uh, something that feels like slightly more heavy and clay-like. I don't know... Uh, um, uh, halva, you know uh, halva, that, uh, that, that strange um, uh, nougat, almondy sweet that you find in, in, in parts of, uh, parts of uh, uh, southeastern Europe. It's got a, a little bit of that uh, nutty clay-like character. And it just feels ultimately a bit disjointed. I like that little bit of the peachy fruit, but there's this clay-like heaviness. And the finish I'm left with is just a little touch simple. I don't know whether it's... Um, 2012 was a very difficult vintage in, in uh, large, large parts of France, and uh, I don't know whether it's the same down, uh, uh, down where the, these Viognier grapes were grown, but it's a sort of nearly there type of wine, but um, not my favourite so far. Let's see how we go on with wine number five, which is Jean-Luc Colombo's Coderone La Redon, 2011. Let's give this a whirl. Now this is a blend of uh, Viognier with a Roussin, 
Uh, I'm not sure whether it's a 50-50 blend or anything like that, but, um, and you get a little bit of the character of each. Uh, of each. Uh, Viognier is the sort of really big, broad-shouldered, come-hither one. Roussan is the one that's got a little bit more mystery about it, a um, bit of smokiness, and I get some of that slightly smoky um, pear skin character coming through here. Smells good, smells interesting. Yes, I like that. Um, it's, 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 it's quite a rich, uh, fleshy wine, but the Roussan is acting almost like as a chaperone for the Viognier. Um, and it's not just being a chaperone and saying, don't do that. It's being a chaperone and uh, maybe slipping it a few naughty secrets at the same time as uh, being seen to look after it. Um, so the Viognier is the peachy, uh, the, yeah, the weighty peachy cashew nut uh, characters there uh, from, from the Viognier and the Roussan just giving a little bit more, uh, a grown-up sophistication uh, and, yes, a little touch of naughtiness. Um, so maybe that's the wine I'm going to have a, a glass of. Um, actually, no, I think I, I, I think I might have a, a glass of the Esmeralda and then a glass of that. Uh, but um, a nice set of wines. I might even find a space to have a glass of Pinot Gris in there somewhere, but uh, only three glasses, no more. See you soon.